And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Last week, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner signed an executive order banning chokeholds and no-knock warrants. But that's not all. Take a look at this. HPD's officers will also be required to issue a verbal warning before firing their weapon. No more shooting at a moving vehicle. Some are calling these changes a good start, but not the end game. We spoke to several members of Houston City Council to get their take on the issue. I really want people to know that this was a response for the short term um, and just the beginning. Uh, we are looking at more options um, for really uh, meaningful, actionable police reform. And I think it's important that people know that the conversations must be ongoing. Uh, this is a, a, a movement. This moment in time now, we need to uh, capture this and make sure that the reforms that happen now are meaningful and actionable. And Isaiah, if I can add, I think what's so significant about these executive orders is that it actually interpret, um, changes the uh, policy of Houston Police Department. So historically, for the last 40 years, it's been their practice not to train with chokeholds. It's been their practice, um, but it has not been in their on their books as policy. So what that executive order does immediately is now creates policy where disciplinary actions and accountability measures can be tied to that because um, in the past that there wasn't. We believe that more needs to happen and we have a committee meeting uh, set up with our chairwoman uh, Cayman. Uh, we're inviting everyone to come out. We want to hear and we understand the mayor has a task force but we still have a duty and obligation to listen to our constituency and I'll tell you my constituency for the most part, they want to revamp the independent review board. They want to make some changes in that manner. Uh, and we're here to listen to them. Dr. Shabazz, I think during the Parker administration, we saw some type of review board created. What is that review board lacking when it comes to what many people in the community want uh, as far as the ability to investigate police officers? Well, actually, um, I want to say that we were engaged with the police before George Floyd, just to let you know mm -hmm. that we have all already been moving forward prior to George Floyd. But what is missing, and Jerry already said it, uh, is the subpoena power. And I believe the subpoena power is very important because it can actually work both ways to validate the whole process. When you have a, a review board that can ask for other information other than that which was placed before them, I believe that you have given them the power to fully investigate. And to say that, it, a police officer may be guilty, but I think the community wants to hear that from the community, whether he's guilty or whether he's exonerated, because it gives credibility to the process. And so I think it's the subpoena power that's that key piece. And of course, we're not done with the council members just yet. We ask them if the police chief is the right man to usher in change. Currently, Art Acevedo will continue our exclusive with the council members when we come back after this. Stay with us. Uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz, we interrupted you. Let's get to the issue of unions. Will they help or hinder this process, the union here in, poli in uh, Houston? Well, I think certainly we have an opportunity now. There will be renegotiations of contracts. And so there has been a call to look at Article 30 in particular and Article 26. And those are regarding the 48-hour rule, uh, that, that Article 30 regards the 48-hour rule where you can, cannot um, interview an officer uh, after an event. And so I think we have to look at that. And then Article 26, the makeup of the union and police officers on that particular board uh, could lend one to believe that a police officer will always be exonerated. So we need to look at those things in our contract negotiations to make those things uh, change and reflect that which is more open and transparent. Yes, and, and let me add here, um, at, um on June 8th, when we released our letter, uh, one of the re requests that we made to the mayor was that all of the items that we recommended be adopted in their contracts. So we, we, we are looking at long-term sustainable change, uh, long-term impact 
impact and accountability. And, and, and I will tell you that, um, you know, we need to implement things such as site and release that needs to be implemented into the contracts. Um, the union actually released a letter um, urging uh, Chief Acevedo um, to um, add an additional uh, police officer for patrol. So because there are many cops that are patrolling by themselves, which is uh, the research shows it's, uh, they, they're more likely to have an experience with uh, uh, force, use, uh, use of force. And so there's some things that I think the union is willing to work with council because they understand that this is a critical exactly. time as well. Exactly. It's a critical time for public safety. So this is the time to strike. Um, so we can do policy recommendations, we can do ordinance, but we also need to get to the contract because that's a legally binding document um, that is negotiated with the mayor and the mayor has been more than willing to listen to our concerns and will be more than willing to hear the responses of the community through the task force and our committee. And Martha, when we talk about police reform, what about the police chief? Is he serious? Is he genuine? Many people are questioning his motives, but the question is, is he a good leader for HPD and is he the one to take us into the future with reform? You, you know, I, I think Police Chief Acevedo is, is genuine and that his intentions are pure. But the, the big thing is there is an opportunity now for healing. Um, he is the police chief for the city of Houston. But when we look at police reform, um, people's experiences are real for them. So we have to make sure that what we do going forward, we allow for transparency. The only way we're going to heal the relationships between police and the community is through um, transparency. And that means we have to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, and admit that we aren't perfect and we can improve on our best. Um, and I think that going forward, that's what we have to do as elected officials, as the police chief, as the mayor. We have to make sure that people understand that we want to be transparent and that we want to make change. First of all, we want to engage the public. We want to make sure that they are aware that on Thursday the 25th at 10 a.m., there is a public safety and homeland security meeting where we will ask actually hear their ideas. Uh, they would need to call the city secretary at 832-393-1100 by five o'clock on Wednesday so that they can engage because we are determined that this is just not a moment. This is a real movement. And we do know that we can't legislate parts, but we can legislate consequences. And so certainly that's what we are all moving forward to do. And Jerry, if you wanted to say something on the way out. Uh, you know, Isaiah, we're, we're sincere about this again uh, been affiliated with this my cousin Robert Tolan you know Robbie uh, this is you know you know near and dear to my family and so when we're going to make these changes we're going to make sure they they stick I have a, a son African-American male who's in the 10th grade we want to make sure that there's protections out there we want to build the, the confidence again between the, the community and the and, and the police absolutely so we can have a better city Thank you. Uh, we thank you guys for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. And of course, we look forward to that public meeting on Thursday.